Fashion, as a concept, is inherently linked to time and trends. Fads come and go, and what may have seemed impossible one year could be the most popular style the next, only to be considered a fashion disaster a few years later. All of this seems to imply a kind of random and irrational nature to the origins of trends. What if I told you that there was someone who discovered that fashion trends were instead the result of predictable cause and effect, subject to an almost mathematical system of laws that has more in common with natural sciences than invisible dice rolls and personal expression? James Lafer was an English fashion historian, author, art critic, museum curator and many more things who developed a system called Lever's Law. Lever was a celebrity in his time, his influence reaching so far that he is said to have single-handedly made the study of costume respectable. In 1937, Lever was, together with the illustrator Pearl Binder, the first person to ever host a TV program about fashion. This program, Clothesline, proved to be so popular that the follow-up, close to the centuries, was made the following year. Lever did many things, but he's best known for his writings on fashion history. While studying old photographs as a museum creator, Lever realized that the easiest way to accurately date photographs was to examine the clothing worn by the people in the pictures. His interest in fashion grew and quickly exceeded the conventional approach of fashion historians. In his own words, after studying the what and the when of fashion, he became interested in the how and the why. Lever's first step in searching for the how and the why of fashion trends was the concept of Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist, or time spirit, originates in German philosophy from the 19th century and proposes the existence of a collective spirit or subconscious that causes specific tastes, goals and attitudes among a community such as a nation during a certain time. Lever was fascinated by the effects that the passing of time has on people and their creations. To him, clothing is one of the things most sensitive to changes in the Zeitgeist. While studying old photographs, he started to notice that human activities changed very little over time. Instead, it were the clothes that changed. He noticed how in the past men used to play sports wearing suits and hats, and women would travel through the mountains wearing elaborate dresses. The ones common had become the unthinkable and impossible. It all seems very wasteful and almost meaningless is discarding of old clothes in order to conform to the whim of half a dozen French designers. But the matter is not quite so simple as that. The designers are not their own masters. They can only introduce an innovation if it happens to be in accordance with the spirit of the age. Lever proposed that fashion was mostly influenced by current events. He discovered that women would cut off their hair after revolutions and wars, and particularly shocked the world when he found a link between the popularity of corsets and the fluctuations of the stock market index. It is as if fashion reflects subconsciously or semi-consciously the subterranean movements of society rather than its obvious wishes or habits. The crinoline was wiser than those who wore it. In fact, in the 1920s, economist George Taylor formulated a similar theory he called the hemline index. The worse the economic state of the world, the longer the length of women's skirts. His hemline index perfectly matched later events such as the 1929, 1973 and 1987 stock market crashes and the periods in between. In 2007, a group of analysts predicted that year's Great Recession a few months before it actually hit by analyzing the length of women's skirts. Lever's research reached a watershed moment when he formulated Lever's Law, his most famous theory. Lever wanted to understand why something fashionable would quickly become grotesque, only to be considered charming as time passed. Lever's Law is a set of stages that each fashion trend goes through. The first stage takes place 10 years before the trend actually becomes a trend. The trend will then be considered indecent. As time goes on, the trend becomes shameless. Just before it becomes a popular trend, the trend will be seen as daring. Then, at its popular peak, what was considered indecent only 10 years earlier will be smart or chic. Just one year after its time, the trend becomes dowdy. After 10 years, hideous. 20 years, ridiculous. 30 years, amusing. 50 years, quaint. 70 years, charming. 100 years, romantic. 
and after 150 years, beautiful. As you look at these pictures, how do they make you feel? Do you feel Labour's law applies? Keep in mind that Labour created Labour's law many decades ago, long before many of these styles featured existed, while these pictures were chosen relative to the present, 2020. These stages were not designed to fit our exact past. Also, it should be noted that it's difficult to predict a trend 10 years ahead, and even Lever himself stated it was hard to recognize a trend less than 5 years after its peak. The same principles which hold for the clothes of the past must hold for the clothes of the present and the future. According to Lever, while the duration of trends has drastically shortened over the past few centuries, the pace at which trends move through the stages of Lever's law has remained consistent. At the same time, Lever found that while trends age uniformly, they don't evolve uniformly. For example, professional uniforms change at a different rate than casual clothing. To explain these different rates of change, Lever decided to supplement his theory with the three principles. The three principles originated in the 19th century, and Lever was specifically influenced by the works of the American economist and sociologist Thorstein Veblen and the British psychologist John Flugel. The three principles are the hierarchical principle, the utility principle, and the attraction principle. The hierarchical principle is dressing to indicate your position in society. The utility principle is dressing for practical reasons, such as warmth, safety, and comfort. And the attraction principle is dressing to attract a sexual partner. While Flugel considered the three principles to be of equal importance, Lever considered the attraction principle to be the most important factor for fashion change, saying Our clothes are dictated by the fundamental desires of the opposite sex. Lever proposed that fashion was constantly under the influence of shifting erogenous zones. Every 10 years, another area of the body, specifically the female body, becomes the focal point of attraction, and fashion changes to match. The erogenous zone is always shifting, and it is the business of fashion to pursue it without ever catching up. Lever argued that women's fashion changed increasingly quickly, because women are in a constant competition to look more attractive than other women, while men use the hierarchical principle in combination with the attraction principle to showcase their social status. Lever also concluded that this distinction between male and female attitudes towards the three principles only came to be after the French Revolution. Before then, men were equally concerned with flashy, seductive attires. And at the same time, it's considered very effeminate to have exciting clothes, for men to have exciting clothes. But after all, look at the medieval times, look at the 18th century. There was nothing feeble about Drake and then Raleigh and all those people. And I think perhaps we should get back to exciting clothes like that. Poor naked man, unable to grow the cock's comb or the peacock's feathers out of his own body, has been constrained to grow them out of his mind. Different types of clothing call for different distribution of the importance of the three principles, causing the trends to change at different paces and in different ways. Although Lever is not as frequently discussed these days as he was during the 20th century, his work remains highly influential among fashion historians and even time philosophers. Do you feel Lever's law still holds true? I'd like to ask you to think about what you're wearing right now and to listen to this quote by James Laver. Clothes are never a frivolity. They always mean something. And that something is to a large extent outside the control of our conscious minds.